Welcome back to Celtics Now. It's time for a different perspective on the green as we bring you Rich Shirt and Leaf from 98.5 The Sports Hub and see if you get rich. Thank you, Molly. And what a month it has been for the Celtics. Amongst all the rumors and trade speculation, the trade deadline has passed, and we learned two things. The big four have at least one more playoff run in them, and Pau Gasol still looks like a llama. But seriously, between KG's move to the five and the subsequent dip in the fountain of youth and Rondo grabbing triple doubles like Kendrick Perkins gets technicals, this has been one hell of a fun streak to watch as a Celtics fan. Now, in my humble opinion, my two favorite moments on television today are one, when Molly McGrath ever so sweetly says my name at the beginning of the segment, and two, when you start to realize one of the Celtics referees is about to cause our friend Tommy Heinsohn to have one of those nights. Now, anyone who knows me knows that I think Tommy Heinsohn is the greatest broadcaster living today. He's part Celtics legend, part friend at the bar who says exactly what's on his mind, and part that lovable crazy uncle you have who thinks the mailman is a government spy. But most importantly, we do know that Tommy can't stand bad foul calls by referees. Scratch that. He can't stand bad foul calls against the Celtics by referees. And you know, scratch that. Sometimes he just hates referees in general. But there are three different levels of Heinsohn when it comes to his displeasure against a bad foul call. So let's go from zero to Heinsohn, shall we? Here's an example of the first level of Heinsohn. You know, I'm getting so tired of these double technical fouls. This is like throwing candy to kids. This is awful. I just throw these out there like it's nothing. They can't make up their mind, and Bogut's still in the game. Now, we call that the Tiny Heinsohn. It's a passionate call that usually starts wordless, just a series of grunts of disapproval during slow-motion replays. <laughs> that sound, my friend, is the Heinsohn engine just revving up, getting ready to take off to This Is Ridiculousville. Now, let's go to level two, Heinsohn. Should throw him out of the league on that call. Ah, the half Heinsohn. You get not only the patted in, give me a break, but also a call to action to throw someone out of the league. At this point, you're sitting on your couch, praying and hoping Tommy takes it to level three. A level as rare as Haley's Comet, a touchdown by Ocho Cinco, or a bad hair day for Gary Tangway. Ladies and gentlemen, level three. Believe me, this is going to happen during a regular season, and... Uh... This is absolutely NBA. It's stupid. Boom. Ladies and gentlemen, we have gone full Heinsohn. At this point, you have stood up in your living room, cheered like Drago just got his teeth knocked out in Rocky IV. Tommy has turned green and ripped off his shirt. And after saying, the NBA is stupid, throws down his mic like the end of 8 Mile and said, referee, you just got the full Heinsohn. And that, my friends, is why Tommy Heinsohn will always get a free stake at the Palm and Jerry Ramey gets the seat by the bathroom. And once again, let's meet another unofficial mascot for the Boston Celtics. This guy. Whoa. My. With a look like that, I bet he has an awesome unofficial mascot name. I have been fending off the ladies and punting little children who've been trying to get this man's autograph. What is your name, sir? My name is Bob Marley, a.k.a. Bob Celtic Superfan. Sir, Bob might be the worst mascot name of all time. You, sir, are no Wally the Green Monster or the Philly Fanatic. You're just Bob. You're new this year, right? I mean, I've never seen this get up. Well, the thing is, let me set the record straight for the Celtics Superfan Nation. I've been coming to the Celtics game for at least 10 years. When Paul Pierce first came in the league, we had that playoff again in Indiana, and he threw his shirt in the crowd. That's how long I've been here. Oh, yeah, that playoff game when the TD Garden was located in Indiana, where the game actually was. Wow, that was a long time ago. Shall we continue? As super fans, we all have to stick together, because if there's a missing link, the chain and the Celtics nation would never, never do without the Celtics super fans. So I, I think it's a really good thing as we as super fans stick together. Ah, uh, the super fans, much like the super friends, except without superpowers and all with really bad names like Bob. Let's move on. 
Can I try those on? Of course. Do I all of a sudden become like like a cool like Zelda Superman if I wear those? Wait, you gotta that, do my wait. You gotta do my move first. If you could do my move and then you put it on. You gotta move? Yes. All right. Te teach me how to do it, sexy. Let's do it. I feel so naughty. Don't let, act like you haven't gyrated violently in front of strangers for a little bit of cash. I don't feel so nice right now. Let's move on. Celtic Nation, first game ever. Ever, ever. Here we go. So here we go. You got to do this. No, 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 no. Not with her. Not with her. Cut the tape. Yeah, I just prevented that gentleman from having to knock on doors everywhere he moved for the next 10 years. Hey, Bob, we like you. You're a great guy. But why do you insist all of you super fans on wearing sunglasses indoors? Nonetheless, Bob, you're A-OK -okay on the unofficial mascot scale.